Okay, welcome back to our uh, live demo of the borehole design. Um, unlike some other live demos, I don't have a extremely well set uh, demonstration. Rather, I just thought we would explore some of the uh, possibilities. Okay, so I've got a GLHE Pro input file. This came from some of uh, my senior level students who are working on a design project. They've already analyzed the loads for a uh, building. And this uh, came to me for uh, basically an input file they wanted to discuss. And they had done several th uh, different things and I've changed some things, but if we go to, but this will give you an idea of what can be done. Uh, so, first of all, they um, they had um, chosen a borehole diameter and set the geometry and uh, so on. They had used uh, standard bentonite grout with a conductivity of it's around 0.4. So often you see numbers between 0.38 and 0.43 in BTUs per hour per foot degree Fahrenheit. And, but they had already set, for example, the U-tube, SDR 11, three quarter inch. That's what they're using. And the location, right? And as I mentioned in the uh, previous part, there's a spacing where the tubes are touching each other. There's a spacing here where the tubes are close together. It's one eighth of an inch um, in, uh, English units, as we commonly call it, unit, American units, we often call them English, uh, or British units. The uh, uh, B spacing is what they had chosen. That's pretty typical for a uh, YouTube where we're not controlling the spacing. And then there's the C spacing where you've pushed it out against the borehole walls. So we've set those, those are all set. The flow rate has been set by their overall flow and the number of boreholes. And so if we calculate the borehole resistance, you'll see that the Reynolds number is about 13,400. So that's well into the turbulent uh, regime. We have have short circuiting chosen, although it probably doesn't make much difference. We have a borehole resistance of about 0.44 degrees Fahrenheit per BTU per hour per foot. And if we compare that to a groundwater filled borehole in Scandinavia, that's somewhere around say two and a half times a typical value. So groundwater filled borehole would be, um, if we could use it, would be considerably better. So let's just go ahead, select that. And then we're just gonna size to 90 degrees maximum, 40 minimum. 20 year period and we get 440.94 feet. So for here that would be pretty deep. Probably we would have to go to more boreholes uh, in that case. So if we um, went back to this and we chose thermally enhanced grout, you can get, there's a range of values you can get if you look, but uh, some years ago when they first started making thermally enhanced grout, there was one, if I remember right, it's, I think it was called Thermal Grout 85. It was a s sort of a set mixture of bentonite grout with quartz sand. And if we calculate the boreal resistance now, you'll see it dropped uh, significantly from 0.44 down to 0.25. Reynolds number, of course, is the same. Everything else is the same, just the grout conductivity. So if we size based on that, right now we're to 389.79 feet, right? So it's basically a 50 foot savings out of say 450. So uh, I think that's, uh, should be around 11, 12%, something like that savings. Um, we could try going to a higher, higher conductivity grout even than that. It's been a while since I've looked. 
Okay, so I've just actually gone and looked online and looked at the GeoPro website. It's a grout manufacturer here in the US. And they can get up to 1.6. Now I've talked to them about this before and they, they will caution you that, you know, that may not make sense to go that high. Um, but, you know, at least it's, it's physically possible. So let's just see what we get. Okay, so you see the grout resistance dropped again to 0.17. And if we size that, right now we've gone to 353.6. So if I pull up the calculator, just take 353.6 over the original, 440.94. All right, we've saved about 20%. Okay, so that's significant. Um, in theory, right, if we put in spacers, we could push the, the um, tubes out against the wall that would further reduce the grout resistance. Now see it's gone down to 0.1362. So if we check that, right now we're getting to 337, but okay, probably can't really do a really direct comparison. But what you'll see is that there's diminishing returns. You can, we've gone to the maximum highest grout. Now we've pushed the tube out to the wall. And we've increased our savings a little bit. Uh, I say savings in drilling depth. All right, so now we're down to something like 23.4% savings. Um, now I say that I'm using the term savings loosely here because that is probably not going to get us um, or that's probably not going to be economically feasible to a pay for all the carbon particles needed to get the conductivity up to 1.6 b pay for the labor time associated with installing spacers on 140 boreholes it is probably going to be cheaper just to go to a larger field um, but that is one of the things you can look at is you know as you at least analyze with glg pro how much savings could you get um, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, the savings is de also dependent on the ground thermal conductivity. Okay, I mentioned short circuiting effects. They're unlikely to be important, but let's, let's go back to the starting case, 0.4 and shank spacing of B spacing. Okay, so there's our original uh, resistance. Now, if I take off the short circuiting effect, right, you see no difference at all. Um, and that's, be, that's because <clears throat> this, there's really not a lot of uh, short circuiting influence um, in a sort of standard size uh, borehole here. If we, we might be able to see it if we put a like put the pipes right next to each other. Let's calculate without, that's 0.576. If we add short circuiting, now we're not getting much difference. It depends on several things. And uh, I, we often don't see very, very significant effects even at much deeper boreholes. So it's probably be a little bit too convoluted to uh, make the you know switch to a a, uh, a lot fewer boreholes and make them twice as deep and go you know 900 feet. So we'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, let's see what else is there to discuss. Probably not that much more for for this type of borehole. So I think we'll stop and then we'll come back look briefly at W tubes and so on.